it does take leadership. It requires someone who comes with the vision. Um, and that leader may have a vision of saving folks one by one. If I can just get this one ready, then that will be worth it. But to have a collective vision means that it's not enough to just get that one or th this one or that one. And I remember hearing my mother talk about uh, going to school and the community's response. So we've had these different strategies. Sometimes the strategy has been, if I can just save this one because of the circumstances. So my mother talked about the fact that if you were from a very poor family, you, your family may not have been able to pay for all the books and supplies that you needed. So even though you were inspired, even though you wanted to go to school, maybe the circumstances wouldn't allow you to participate. So even the genes solution may not have been sufficient for the whole community or to bring everybody along. Now, given that, how is it that we're going to create this atmosphere that helps those who have this privilege see themselves as accountable and responsible to the ones who could not be there? Right. It was a lot of self-determination um, because one of the things that I had in my advantage, I had a mother who believed in education. It was a time when there was a lot of racism going on, and there was a lot of Jim Crowism going on in this part of the country, and, and we had to go through a lot of things like that. But my mother always told us that if we get an education, nobody could take it from us, and we could go as far as uh, we wanted to go. So that was in the back of my mind. And just to make preparation for coming to school the next day, there are many days that I didn't have but one pair of pants and I would go home and wash those blue jeans on the washboard in a, in a wash tub every day, hang them on a body fire at night, let them dry, and then iron them with a smoothing iron. And I would tell people sometimes that uh, sometimes my shoes would have so many holes in them that I could actually step on a piece of chewing gum and tell you what flavor it was. Growing up, the, the community's orientation was, and how are the children? because they were investing in the children for the future and survival of the entire community. Being here with a smaller class, you got a lot of one-on-one, -on -one, and uh, the teachers, they really, knew the fam they really knew the family and the family members. They sort of bonded with the parents and all, because some of the teachers, I heard my mom say a long time ago, uh, they came and they stayed with different families. So they really got a chance to know the people in the community. That's how our community could send children into the hostile environment of desegregating a school. A little child having to be escorted to school by federal marshals and people screaming all around on the side, kill them, get rid of those, we don't want them in here. But the family and the community has come together to say, this is our pathway out and we believe and we have a spiritual conviction because we've prayed at home before we send them out. So there's a sense of who we are that is at the core of what our vision is and what our strategies are. And today we're we're risking losing that.